Hi everybody, it's Webby. Welcome to another car review video. Uh, today we're having a look at the 2022 BMW i4 eDrive 40. Uh, so a four-door Grand Coupe, um, fully electric. It's the entry-level model in terms of electrification for the four series Grand Coupe, because uh, you can also get the M50, which is the super fast one, uh, and cost a lot more money. Um, so today we're concentrating on the eDrive 40 model. Um, we'll have a look a bit around the spec of the car. We'll talk about performance and charging and that type of thing um, but we'll also take you for a drive because obviously a lot of people haven't experienced an electric car before um, I've been lucky enough to drive a few so I want to see how this compares to some of the others also earlier in this year I was lucky enough to drive a 430 Grand Coupe so that's a two litre turbo petrol uh, I spent a week driving that around and was really really impressed so I want to see how this electric version compares to the petrol powered 4 series Grand Coupe um, it will be quite interesting to see the differences between the two. So let's get started and head around the outside of the car first before we jump onto the inside and then take it for a drive. So starting off with the front of this i4, it's very recognisable as the new face of BMW with the huge great kidney grills which we also saw on the petrol powered version of the 4 Series Grand Coupe. But it is slightly different. The first thing you'll notice is the little blue sort of outside trim on the outside of the kidney grills which actually denotes that this is a fully electric vehicle. The grills are actually the same size as the petrol powered car, but where the petrol version had sort of the open vents uh, and to obviously let air into uh, cooled radiators, it's slightly different on the electric version. The sort of closed in panels at the top section of the grill here hide some sensors, plus also you've got the radar cruise control sensor down the bottom as well. There is a little bit of open section down the bottom because there is a radiator behind there, so you do need some cooling for the engine slash motor um, so yeah it, it's similar but different um, but the styling looks still very much like the 4 series Grand Coupe this particular car is finished in a colour called Dravit Grey um, which on first reflection just looks like a normal sort of dark grey finish but when you get it out in the sun and you walk around and look at the different angles of the car you do pick up some sort of like gold fleck in the paint and it actually looks quite smart because it's almost like it changes colour um, the sun is starting to come out so I'll I'll film a little bit around the car and you can see what the colour looks like. I'm just going to wander you around the outside of the car just to show you how this sort of paint changes colour. So you can see it's obviously fairly grey, but then when the sun sort of hits certain angles, particularly up there on the rear quarter near the tail light, you can see sort of all the gold in the paint and how it just sort of changes colour, you know, coming up here over sort of the rear pillar there. It's actually really pretty. Um, but like I say, if you didn't know it, you would just think it's a standard grey paint finish. Now as you'd expect, the boot on this car is fully electric. And when you open it up, you've got a generous 470 litres of carrying capacity. If you fold down the rear seats and take out the parcel shelf, it's got 1,290 litres, which is plenty for most people. Um, you can get acres and acres of shopping in there, or bits and pieces if you're going to Bunnings. Um, so you don't really need to buy an SUV or a wagon. Inside the boot, there's a little storage cubby as well. So there's plenty of space in here to keep your charging cables. We've got the standard one, which will plug into your plug socket in your garage. And then also in this little bag here, we've got the one that if you're out and about, you can actually use a public fast charger. So it's handy that BMW give you both cables to charge your car. Normally under the bonnet of a BMW, you find something like a two liter turbo four cylinder, or even an inline six cylinder turbo petrol engine as well. But not in this one. You lift the bonnet, which is particularly light, and all you see is just a bunch of black plastic. Um, I'm guessing it's because BMW don't really want you fiddling with all the electrics on this car. Because obviously, yeah, it's going to be quite complicated and they probably don't want you electrocuting yourself. Uh, so that's a tour of the outside of the i4. We'll jump onto the inside next. But before we do, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell to find out whenever a new car review goes live. You won't want to miss some of the stuff that's coming for the rest of this year, so stay tuned. Right, so let's jump onto the inside and have a look and see how this is different to a standard 4 Series Grand Coupe. So let's head on to the inside of this i4 then. Uh, keyless entry, as you would expect from BMW. Uh, we've got some nice things on the insides of the doors. So we've got the memory positions there for the driver's seat. Uh, there's a button just there so you can open the electric tailgate from inside the car. We've got this lovely, beautiful black leather trim inside. Um, I do quite like sort of how bolstered the seats are as well. 
uh, and you've also got this extendable piece at the front as well so if you've got longer legs uh, you can extend it and give your under leg a bit more support seats are obviously fully electric as well uh, you've even got a button there which adjusts the bolsters here and here um, to actually give yourself a bit more body support as you're driving along um, but overall looks very similar to a standard 4 series grand coupe uh, with the big exception of that massive screen there that goes all the way across pretty much the entire dashboard of the car now we have got the uh, factory fitted sunroof as part of that visibility pack that i spoke about earlier uh, there's a nice lot of light inside the car as well actually uh, which is quite nice because I mean it's all black uh, sometimes they can get a bit too dark and claustrophobic so this is the view from the driver's seat uh, we've got this beautiful leather trim steering wheel uh, with the M Sport badging uh, things like all your adaptive cruise control functions over this side uh, over here we've got things like your phone uh, your volume, your radio uh, presets in front of the driver you've got the large digital instrument display uh, which is absolutely fantastic uh, it's actually quite easy to read it's not as complicated as it sort of looks um, the left hand side you've got your speedo your right hand side um, shows you sort of whether you're using charge in the battery or whether you're reclaiming energy to go back into the battery uh, which is quite a cool thing to watch um, so it's really really easy to operate then we come over to the other side of the large sort of curved display it's actually one piece as you can see if you look at that it literally goes all the way over there goes all the way across to almost the passenger side of the car and um, so this center section is your, it's your standard infotainment system uh, but it's much bigger than you find in any other bmw uh, but you can just swipe across you can look at all your different apps and functions that you want to choose uh, it's actually really really cool um, it's also got wireless apple carplay as well um, so that projects onto your screen uh, again it's full screen which is fantastic uh, so Apple users like myself um, can see all your, your maps and your Spotify and all your different functions from your Apple CarPlay. A lot of it is now touchscreen though. Typically in your BMW you'd have control sort of underneath um, for like your climate control. But that you'd have to press to go into the climate control menu now. So me it's a little bit of a step backwards because I do like sort of the physical buttons here um, on the dash. Um, but it's not too terrible because you know it's sort of right there in front of you. Um, even if you've got your home screen, you've still got your climate control buttons there just down the bottom. Uh, so it's not too terrible. You do get a couple of buttons there uh, for like your heated rear window and fast demiss for your front windscreen. Um, and preset radio station um, sort of selections and volume button there and your hazards. Um, underneath, we've got a wireless charging pad under there. We've also got a USB-A charging point. Uh, a couple of cup holders and then a 12 volt power socket there uh, does fit a coke bottle in there other carbonated beverages are available We're not sponsored by coke unfortunately um, and then we come to the sort of standard where you've got your gear stick uh, controls for your iDrive system uh, your cameras parking sensors start stop then your driving modes there uh, automatic hold and then your electric handbrake so it's very sort of familiar uh, if you've got a BMW, if you've been in a BMW recently, uh, there's not too sort of anything scary there. You think, oh, Jesus, electric car, uh, it's a little bit different. Um, so it's actually really, really simple to use. Uh, then coming back, we've got a bit more storage underneath the center armrest. Um, so nice bit of storage there. We've got another USB-C fast charging point. Uh, so that's always handy to have. Um, but generally, it's just a nice place to be. It's very... So sitting in the driver's seat now then, um, these sports seats are really, really comfortable, give you great loads of support, uh, lovely soft leather, got that extendable piece underneath here, front of your legs, like I mentioned earlier. Beautiful leather steering wheel, it's nice and soft. Maybe a little bit chunky, kind of around here, where you're gonna hold it. It's a little bit thick uh, for maybe some people. Um, I don't find it too bad, um, but the view ahead's pretty good. Um, you've got great visibility out the front windows aren't too bad for a coupe um but yeah it's just it's just a nice driving position um it definitely sort of makes you feel like you're in like a luxury car um, but also something sporty at the same time now i've got my seat where i would have it for my driving position so let's have a jump in the back of the car and see how much space we've got back there now
Now, although that door opens nice and wide, you do have to be a little bit careful when you climb into the I-4 um, because you've got that sloping roof line being a grand coupe. So yeah, you'd have to be careful not to hit your head on the ceiling there. Um, but once you're in, it's actually not too bad. Um, fairly decent amount of leg space here. And you can say the seat is in my driving position. You can get your feet just about underneath the driver's seat. Uh, lift that up a little bit and you'll be able to stretch your legs out slightly further. We've got two air vents in the back here with separate air conditioning controls for the climate control. Um, so that's where it's nice so rear passengers can actually set their own temperature. We've then also got two USB-C fast charging points, which is great as well. So if you've got kids in the back, they can keep their phones or tablets charged up uh, whilst you're driving along. Uh, vision out the side isn't too bad as well. Vision out the front is really good to get a nice view of the road ahead. Um, yeah, headroom is pretty decent too. The cabin sort of feels fairly light, particularly having that sunroof, it does let a lot of light into the cabin. Um, I'd imagine if you didn't, it would feel sort of fairly closed in and claustrophobic, uh, particularly with this sort of black roof lining. Other features, we've obviously got a pull down armrest as well. A uh, couple of cup holders there, which is obviously good to see. Uh, and then the outer two seats have got the child fixing points for the ISOFIX baby seats. Um, so yeah, you're pretty well catered for. It's not the biggest amount of space in the back here. It's probably comfortable for two people, but three would be a bit of a squeeze, uh, especially as you've got the transmission tunnel, because uh, the i4 is rear wheel drive. Um, but generally overall, yeah, not a bad place to be. So we'll go for a drive now and um, yeah, see how this compares out on the open road to a conventional petrol powered four series grain coupe. So you can probably hear that sort of whirring noise. Um, I guess it's just there to make you sort of feel like you are actually moving. Um, not sure what other benefit it's got, but it's there. Um, you've got these different driving modes, the buttons that I mentioned earlier, uh, when we were having a look sort of around the cabin. Now, if you've got the car in comfort or eco pro mode, to my mind, the steering is a bit too light. You don't really have much connection from what's happening with the steering wheel to sort of what the wheel's doing. Um, so I actually find it's better to put the car in sport mode because um, you get a little bit more weight to the steering and you definitely can feel more of what's happening when you actually turn the steering wheel with what the wheels are doing. Um, yeah, so my personal preference is put the car in sport mode. Um, you can configure it individually, so if you don't want you know, the, the motor to be in sport mode but you just want a slightly heavier steering, uh, you can configure that through the iDrive system um, because yeah, everybody's got sort of different tastes. Uh, but I certainly prefer the slightly heavier steering. Um, it definitely feels yeah, a bit more confidence inspiring as you're going along. It does handle just as well as a petrol powered uh, four series Grand Coupe. Although you can feel the extra weight um, obviously of the batteries inside this car. Um, you definitely sort of notice it sort of change of direction that type of thing but a simple sort of you know going around a sort of fairly quick corner uh, definitely still handles like a BMW and so definitely in that sport mode is, is, is definitely the way to go you say you can cope with going around sort of one corner but a, a quick change of direction you'd sort of have it a little bit confused I think um, petrol powered car would definitely do a better job of quick changes of direction Inside the car though, it's really, really quiet as you'd expect. Um, you can hear a little bit of sort of tyre noise or road noise, depending on what sort of road surface you're driving along. But actual noise from the car itself is minimal. Uh, it's really, really quiet in here. In terms of performance figures, um, this E-Drive 40 has got 250 kilowatt, 430 new meters of torque. So it's not the last word in outright performance. Um, if you want that, you have to go to the M50 uh, i4, but that's a heap more money. That's like $170,000, uh, or well, certainly from the research I was doing, where something like this specification here, you're looking around sort of 115, 120. Um, so there's a fair saving if you go for the E-Drive 40 model over the M50. <laughs> Having said that, I would like to get my hands on the M50 model because that's got 400 kilowatt, which would be absolutely ridiculous. Um, 
and does zero to 100 in less than four seconds. Uh, so yeah, that'll be quite interesting. Um, this model does the zero to 100 sprint in 5.7 seconds. So it doesn't disgrace itself. It's still pretty quick uh, for a family car. Like the petrol powered uh, 430i that I drove earlier this year. It's a lovely sort of place to be. It's got that sort of grand cruiser sort of feel about it. You could do a long journey, get out the other end. You wouldn't feel uncomfortable. You wouldn't have backache or anything like that. Um, it does lend itself to, you know, sort of munching up the miles and yeah, if you get to the other end feeling pretty sort of fresh. The other thing you've got to do is obviously plan your journey pretty well. BMW claim it's got a range of 520 kilometers. Um, I don't think you're gonna get anywhere close to that, probably 450 at push. Um, and charging takes forever if you charge it up at home, just like a regular plug socket. Um, if you own one of these, I'd recommend putting a fast charger in at home because not a lot of people are lucky enough to live close to one of the public fast chargers. Um, so the two cables that BMW give you, the one you plug into your house is going to obviously be the one that most people use. But in, if you're doing short journeys, it's not so bad. I mean, my journey to work is 11 kilometers each way. So for me, it doesn't really matter. I don't need a fast charger because I can just keep it topped up through the week if I need to. Um, but yeah, if you were doing, you know, constantly doing long journeys or just needed that facility to charge it quicker, then yeah, I'd highly recommend getting a fast charger put in to obviously your home or your work, just so you can you know, have that confidence that you're gonna have a full battery all the time. Um, there's plenty of places, if you live in like a, a central city area, uh, certainly as well Melbourne, but yeah, you sort of venture further out of Melbourne and there's not really that many sort of public fast charging places, uh, which is a bit disappointing because you know, Australia is a long way behind a lot of countries in terms of its infrastructure for electric cars. Um, so it does sort of put people off a little bit because, you know, you want to plan a journey and you've got to be very, very careful that, you know, where you're going to sort of stop, where you're going to charge your car. Um, but that's just not necessarily this car, it's electric cars in general. Um, but yeah, it's just something that, you know, you've got to think about when you're considering buying an electric car. So there you go then, that is the 2022 BMW i4 eDrive 40. Um, I've actually really enjoyed my week driving this car. Um, I always enjoy electric cars because it's just, that's just a little bit different from the norm, isn't it? Um, it's always nice and quiet and relaxing to drive an electric car. Um, and BMW seem to do it really, really well. Um, it certainly makes you realize how well they do it compared to say a Tesla. Um, Tesla's full of tech and everything else, but it feels like an electric car where this feels like a normal car, it just happens to be electric. Um, so I think they've done an absolutely fantastic job of this. Um, if you've got any questions on this car, uh, or just some comments in general, leave them in the comments section below for me, and then I'll come back to them as soon as I can for you. Um, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, um, and I will see you in the next one.